Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship for today. When we're in church, we normally have notices before we gather in worship, and I have a notice for you this morning. You may have noticed in Robert's letter each week a paragraph thanking you for your support for our church finances. The closure of the church and hall has, of course, given the church an additional financial challenge with the loss of hall rents and weekly giving via collections made in church. Many of you give regularly through parish giving via direct debit or by standing order. And in his letters, Robert has suggested that some of you may wish to make additional donations via internet banking. I'm pleased to say that thanks to your generous response, our finances are holding up quite well. Karen, our treasurer, has recently reviewed how we stand and is certainly encouraged by what she has seen. To move us on into the 21st century, we've now added the availability of online giving via the church website. This enables you to give without needing to go via internet banking. All you need is a debit card or a credit card. Simply log on to the church website, stoswaldschurch.org.uk, and click on the Donate Here button. This will take you then to our giving page where you can select a donation or choose your own amount. That will then take you on to the page to enter your card details. We hope you find this a simple and easy way of giving, and thank you again for supporting the work of St Oswald's in the community. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, 
Is it not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick? But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Are you one of us or one of them? An us or them mentality is pretty much embedded into us from a very early age. As small children, we quickly tend to group together as boys or girls and form our own circles of best friends. If you are part of the in crowd, that's fine. But if not, you're left on the outside. As we grow older, these divisions only seem to grow as we increasingly seem to mix with people like ourselves. Last week saw the third National Windrush Day, celebrating the contribution made by the Windrush genera generation to life in Britain and the continuing Black Lives Matter campaign highlighted just how deeply divisions in 21st century Britain still run. And that applies as much in the Church of England as it does to society in general. Bishop Allen from our own diocese recently had to apologise to a black ordinand who was turned down for a post because he was not considered a good match to minister in a monochrome white working class area. Reflecting on this over the last week has made me think how, since my retirement, my own separation from the diversity of our country has grown. Throughout my working career, I worked in offices where there was a good mix of people, although it has to be admitted that as you rose up the hierarchy, that diversity shrank to almost vanishing point. Working for over 38 years as a tax inspector did on occasions mean that I experienced the kind of reaction that makes you feel as if you're not part of the in crowd. Somehow, people who work for the tax authorities are even today viewed by some as if they are like the tax inspector in our gospel reading, working for an occupying enemy. Fiddling your taxes or engaging in tax avoidance is somehow seen as either acceptable or at worst a victimless crime. Mixing with them therefore becomes ill-advised as you might give something away and get caught out. When you tell people you're a tax inspector, they sometimes simply clam up on you. The Pharisees regarded tax collectors and others who they classified as sinners as people to be avoided and certainly not to be seen eating together with. The best thing to do was to mix only with the righteous, people like themselves. Jesus, as a rabbi and teacher, ought therefore to have known better than to mix with such people. And clearly he shouldn't be inviting someone who they saw as being among the worst of a bad lot to be among his followers. Jesus responds by telling the Pharisees that it's not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick. Jesus doesn't suggest that they don't need to change their ways. They may be sick, just like the rest of us, but what they need is mercy. And he has come to offer the chance of new life in him, just as he offers all of us that same new life. The Pharisees probably don't really get the point that they are every bit as much in need of healing as are the tax collectors and sinners. When Jesus says he has come not to call the righteous, but to call sinners, they miss the point that he has come to call them too. And when it comes to getting the point, I wonder whether some of us today 
and our political leaders in particular are a bit like the Pharisees. Next to my sailing club, which is up in Brent by the Welsh Harp Reservoir and open space, there's a car park. At night, it's regularly used by young people gathering together. One of the things they were doing was bringing up cars in which they performed donuts. That's spinning cars round in circles at high speed and other antisocial manoeuvres making an awful lot of noise. Following complaints, the response of the council has been to put about 20 rows of humps across the car park to make such manoeuvres impossible. They've probably simply pushed the antisocial behaviour and activity elsewhere, rather than seeking to engage with the young people to find out what has led them to seek entertainment in this way. Undoubtedly, for many of these young people, living through lockdown in their small flats with few open spaces around to exercise in and let off steam has been stressful and difficult. Perhaps the council and the rest of us in general have, like the Pharisees, failed to get the point and see to what extent the problem we perceive is caused by the socio-economic deprivation that has not really been tackled despite a series of inquiries over the years. Maybe the humps are necessary to police the problem for now, but what action are we taking to tackle the underlying issues that, and make a real change? It will take time, but we need to make a start. And the time to do so is no doubt now, just as it was when Jesus embarked on his ministry with the call to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Amen. We pray for our world as we all face the COVID-19 pandemic with its health and socio-economic consequences. In our differences, unite us by your love. Enable us to act together to uphold life and to make this world a just and peaceful household for all humanity. We pray for those who are guiding our nation and shaping national policies that they may make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. We remember particularly anyone who is lonely, who has mental health issues, or is suffering from domestic abuse. We pray for all who are suffering from coronavirus or other illness, that they may find relief. We thank you for the work and dedication of our doctors, nurses, carers and medical researchers and pray that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our homes and families, our schools and young people. We pray for the work of the Children's Society with vulnerable children and young people who are at greater risk during this time. Those who are not safe at home, those who may be plunged into even greater poverty, those whose fragile mental health may worsen, those who feel abandoned and alone. We pray for Children's Society staff as they find new ways to support these young people in challenging circumstances. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, as members of the body of Christ, we are called to treat all with dignity. Let us recognise discrimination, oppression and abuse. We pray for those who live with injustice. Encourage us to lift up their voices and strengthen their hope. Help us to see each and every person is unique and special created in your image and equal to everybody else. We thank you for our community of Croxley Green and pray that it may be a place of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. We pray for the charities which we at St Oswald support 
who work with people in other communities who were already facing challenges before the arrival of COVID-19. Ascend in South Oxy, Alternatives Trust in Newham, East London, the Church Army Marylebone Project working with the homeless. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for the wonders of nature which we are able to see as we walk around the green spaces in our neighbourhood. As members of the body of Christ, we are called to care for the whole of creation. Help us to live as responsible stewards and protect the life and beauty of all that you have made. We pray for the work of Arosha, which works with Christians throughout the world to protect our environment and biodiversity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all those who we pray for to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Hello everyone. Before we close with the Lord's Prayer and a blessing, you've probably heard that churches are now allowed to open for private prayer. This week St Oswald's will be open on Tuesday morning from 9 o'clock till 11 o'clock and on Friday afternoon from 2 o'clock till 4 o'clock. Hand gel provided and all necessary precautions taken. If you're in the vicinity, do please feel welcome to look in. 
We shall also soon be allowed to resume public worship, but with necessary restrictions, and the Church Council are going to consider uh, how we might do that as safely as possible. However, it's probable that uh, online services will continue for the foreseeable future, uh, as I know that they have been appreciated and that not everybody is actually going to be able to return to church immediately. Let's pray now for the coming of God's kingdom as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may Christ give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.